In this video, I want to introduce the idea of momentum and how impulses lead to changes in momentum. So, momentum is easy enough to define as long as we're moving at uh, relatively slow speeds, nothing near the speed of light. We have uh, momentum is simply the mass of the object times the velocity. So it's a vector quantity like the velocity. It's proportional to the velocity, just uh, uh, mul multiplied by the mass. Okay. Um, so first to connect this to what we've been doing before with forces, it's useful to differentiate both sides. If we take the derivative of the momentum and then the derivative of the velocity, the mass is just a constant, we see that that's the mass times the acceleration, the derivative of the constant, which is the net force on the object. And so we can rewrite Newton's second law. In fact, this is how Newton originally put Newton's second law, which is the net force was the time derivative of the momentum. And so that's just sort of a, a restatement of Newton too. So let's take a look at uh, what this means. It, look, instead of working in, in vectors, let's go back to, to 1D, sort of our net force now is the net force with the x component of the net force, and we're going to look at the, say, x component of the momentum, which is the mass times the x component of the velocity. So now, if we do this derivative, we have the net force is equal to then the time derivative of the momentum, which could be a function of time, of course, because it's uh, uh, related to the velocity. I I'm going to rewrite this where how I've written it sort of an operator form. We're operating on the momentum to take the derivative. I'm going to rewrite it as the ratio of two differentials, this dp differential divided by the time differential. And um, assuming my functions are uh, uh, can satisfy that condition, which these are all well-behaved functions, so I can, I get, I can then bring the dt on the other side, and I get the net force times the time differential is equal to the momentum differential. Okay, so now that I've sort of separated then uh, t and p on either side, I can integrate both sides. So I have to match my limits of integration. So if, if it, this is integration with respect to t, so there's some time initial, and then there's going to be some uh, momentum initial, that's the momentum associated with that time, since the momentum's a function of time, and then some uh, momentum final, and some time final, and, and this is the momentum associated with with that time, and then I can do this integration. So this the uh, the this integral is particularly easy because it's just integrating the differential between p initial and p final. So that gives me p final minus p initial, which I might even write as delta p. So I then have delta p which is a change in momentum, final momentum minus my initial momentum, is equal to the time integral of my net force. So what is this telling me? This is telling me that forces integrated over time lead to changes in momentum. Forces over time lead to momentum changes. Okay, and so this thing gets its own um, word here. This 
integral is called the impulse. The time integral of the net force between two points in time, and that is the change in momentum each time. So this is in, in one dimension, but it's important to know uh, note that these are still vectors in one dimension. The direction of the vector is given by the sign because there are only two possible directions in one dimension. But this is easily extended to the multi dimensions because so it is a vector is then the time integral of the net force vector. Okay. And this um, isn't too too bad. All this does is just a shorthand to link the x and y components. These are all the integral is a linear operator, so it just goes to the separate components. If I were to rewrite this e equation, I would have, it, let's say, in two dimensions, my px final component minus my px initial component i hat plus my py final component of my momentum plus my y initial component of my momentum j hat limit myself to so two dimensions is then equal to the time integral the time times are are fine of the x component of the net force dt i hat plus t initial to t final of the y component of the net force dt j hat. So these are, are vectors, but then um, they they just separate out into components for so if this right the x component of the change in momentum is equal to the x component of the um the, of the x component of the impulse which is the time integral of the x component of the net force and then the y component of the change in momentum is equal to the time integral of the y component of the net force and then uh as long as we're in vectors they get their they stay on their component uh corresponding x and y components Okay, and so that's the introduction to um, impulse and momentum, and I'll save a few examples for the next video.